1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, the Bible says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Tamang-tama po yung mensahe ng ating awitin sa atin pong mensahe ngayon. Okay, ang ating pong title ng ating message is A Little While. Yung pong twinkling of an eye sa Tagalog, kisap mata. Ganun po kabilis ang kaganapan po na ito. And it is the anticipation, constant, continuous anticipation of a true Christian. Yung pagbabalik po ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Okay? That is the motiva motivating power kung saan nakapagpapatuloy po tayo in this life. Kahit po siya ay punong-puno ng mga trials, temptation, difficulties in many forms. Iba-iba po ang form na yan. Iba-iba, special na nararanasan ng kada isang mana ng palataya. But that is our blessed hope. That is our only source of true and genuine hope. Yung pagbabalik ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Salamat po sa mga katotohanan po na yan. A little while is the, is the title of our message this afternoon as we continue in our series entitled The Prophecy. And I, uh, I would like to invite everyone to please stand up as we open the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 32 to 37. Okay? Samahan niyo po ako sa pagbasa. Sabay-sabay po nating basahin starting from verse 32. Let's read. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great flight of afflictions. Partly, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly, whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Shall we pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this time that we can read your word. Thank you for the message of the song. Thank you for that blessed hope. Thank you, O God, na meron po kami, Panginoon, tunay na pag-asa sa buhay po na ito. Not on this world, not on this temporal life, but in eternity. Doon sa time na makakapiling na po namin ang Panginoong Jesus sa buhay na walang hanggan. We thank you, O God, for that great calling. Thank you for calling us in the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you, O God, na ginagamit mo kami bilang isang part ng simbahan para po ipamahagi, i-witness sa ibang mga tao yung pong mensahe na yon, Yung tunay na source ng hope, O God. We have seen the affliction, the trials, the pain that this world is experiencing right now. Kailangan po Panginoon ng buong sanlibutan ang Panginoong Jesus. Help us, O oh God, to be a true witness of the gospel. A true witness of that hope na amin pong maipa alam, maibalita sa mga taong nakapaligid po sa amin. At kami patuloy din Panginoong tulungan sa biyaya ng Banal na Espiritu na kami po Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng salita ay ma-impress palagi po sa amin mga puso Panginoon that no amount of trial, no amount of affliction can separate us from your love. Thank you, O God, for that promise. Patawad po muli sa amin mga kasalanan. Gamitin mo po ang iyong lingkod right now to be a channel of blessing Sa pagpapahayag na yung salita, mangusap ka sa puso ng mga mana ng palataya at patuloy ka rin, Panginoon, nawa na magkukonbik ng puso ng mga aming mga kaibigan, yung mga hindi pa puligtas, nawa po itong araw na ito. Ang mga critical decision can be made, repenting and turning to Jesus Christ, believing, accepting Him as their Lord and Savior. May you be glorified in our midst, forgive us of all our, 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 our unrighteousness. And this we ask and pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His people will say, Amen. Please be seated. A little while. Sa mga susunod na sandali, maiksi lamang ay may, may mangyayaring kaganapan. Okay? 
At alam natin ang kaganapan na yon sa pagpapatuloy ng ating series na ito pertaining to prophecy. Pero ang pinagpapasalamat natin sa Panginoon is yung kagandahan ng salita niya in this book wherein we can see the consistency within the book itself when it comes to the message about the Lord's coming. Doon sa ating unang mensahe, narinig natin ang salita ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ni Apostle Paul when he wrote to the Corinthian believers. Ganun din naman nung pangalawang Friday natin, it's Apostle John. And now, although silent ang Bible kung sino talaga ang author ng epistle na ito to the Hebrews, but we can see once more the consistency of the message about the Lord's coming. At yung call sa ating mga mananampalataya, both now and even yung mga nauna pa sa atin who have gone before us, yun din ang kanilang mga mensahe, yun din ang kanilang pinangahawakang hope. Hanggang sa bumalik ang Panginoon, iyon pa rin ang mensahe na yung mga generation natin ngayon na susunod sa atin should be the message. Yung generation na susunod sa atin na iyon pa rin ang dapat na mensahe. Isa share, ipipreach sa pulpit. Hanggang sa bumalik yung ating Panginoong Jesus. That ought to be the message of the church. From preaching the gospel of salvation and later on, To the believers, part ng ating maturity in the faith is to hear this message. Maunawaan talaga natin ang tunay na hope na ating pangahawakan whilst we are still here on earth. Upang hindi tayo masidetrack sa focus, alam natin na ang, exist, ang purpose ng existence natin. Alam natin ang kadahilanan kung bakit tayo naging part ng isang simbahan. Naintindihan natin ang commission sa isang simbahan. And that is to preach the gospel, marinig ng mga taong nakapaligid sa atin ang mensahe ng kaligtasan so that they can turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, sila'y ma-disciple upang ma-impress ng ma-impress din sa kanilang puso ang tunay na, pag, na, ang tunay na source ng hope in this life. Not on the temporal life, not on the temporal world, but eternity. And so ngayon, titignan natin ang context ng message na ito sa Book of Hebrews. You see, yung passage na atin pong binasa is a letter of encouragement. Okay? A letter of encouragement ng writer to the Hebrew people. Evident dito yung existence ng suffering, okay? trials, affliction na mayroon ang mga mana ng palataya na ito. Again, it's not common dahil hanggang sa kapanahunan natin, ganun pa rin yung mensahe ng Panginoon sa mga mana ng palataya from the time that we got saved. Hindi nina nais ng Diyos, both from the apostles, especially si Apostle Peter, na tayo magulat. Na kapag tayo na ng palataya na sa Panginoong Jesus, tayo ay makakaranas ng iba-ibang form of trials and afflictions. Sabi ko nga, specific, Tailored dyan sa kada isang mana ng palataya, hindi pare-parehas. Sometimes yung aking trial and affliction is can be an easy thing to, a, to another believer. And vice versa, yung mahirap sa kanya ay maaaring madali sa akin. But still, meron tayong nakikitang pattern in the life of the Christian. That is the way of God. Yun ang method ng Panginoon to refine His people. Kung kaya doon pa lamang sa verse 36 nakita natin, ah sa verse 32, I'm sorry kung babalikan natin yung ating mga binasa. But call to remembrance, there is the first statement of the writer. But call to remembrance, alalahanin ninyo. Okay? Alalahanin ninyo the former days in which after you were illuminated, that's the salvation experience, nung naliwanagan, narinig ang gospel of salvation, nag-respond yung tao, nag-repent, tinanggap si, si Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But look at the next statement. Ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Both in the old times, hanggang sa kapanahunan natin, walang nababago sa mensahe na yan. It's not for us to question the validity of the process of God. Because mahalaga ang process na yan sa isang mana ng palataya. Nadadaan tayo doon sa 
trial of affliction. Doon, nire-refine, sinasanctify, pinupurify ng Panginoon ang ating mga buhay for His service. Sabi nga natin, ito'y preparation natin in eternity. So marinaw sa verse 32, ang pattern na yan sa buhay ng isang mana ng palataya. And in verse 33, it talks about the reproaches and afflictions. Sabi doon, partly, whilst you were made a gazing stock. Ano yung gazing stock? Yung parang ang atensyon ng mga tao, yung mata ng mga tao ay nakatingin sa atin, sa mga mana ng palataya because of the trials, difficulties na ating kinakaharap. At maaaring nagtatanong sila, nag-iisip sila. And so, yun din ang ginagamit ng Panginoon as a great opportunity, sabi nga ni Peter, so that they will ask or they will notice or they will, parang, they are, they are interested. They will be interested of the hope that is in us whilst we are in the midst of trials and affliction. But ang kagandahan sa process na ito ng Panginoon is may pangako siya. Yung grace and mercy ng Panginoon sa kapanahonan natin is still overflowing. Kaya yung 1 Corinthians 10.13 is the summary of God's grace and mercy to a Christian na kumakaharap o nasasadlak or in the presence of such great trials and affliction. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common unto all men. Common unto all men, meaning lahat ng mga mana ng palataya ay mayroon sa kanilang buhay na dadanasin hindi lamang ikaw, hindi lamang ako. You cannot single out yourself na ikaw lamang nakakaranas lahat ng mana ng palataya. So mahalagang maintindihan natin na process yun ng Panginoon sa mga Kristiyano upang hindi tayo magulat. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common unto all men, but God is faithful who will not suffer you, or who will not allow you to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Therefore, from that promise, no amount of trial, no amount of temptation, no amount of affliction or difficulties can separate us from the love of God. Because sa panahon natin, sabi nga natin, the grace and mercy of God is overflowing, lalampas siya at lalampas mawawala yung opportunity for us to grow in our faith, to be refined, linisin ang ating mga buhay kung hindi natin isasubject willfully ang ating sarili sa process na yan ng Panginoon. Para linisin ang ating buhay, immature tayo sa ating pananampalataya. Ang kasama ng process na yon is yung sabi ng Panginoon, He will not allow you to suffer above which you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape. So there's the excitement for a Christian after hearing that promise, after understanding that promise, excited tayo kung paano tayong i-deliver ng ating Panginoon. And after the experience, because it is not through us, it is not our strength, kung kaya tayo naka-overcome, kay nino ang glory at kay, kay nino ang honor? Sa Panginoong Jesus, sa Panginoong Diyos. Yun na ang process talaga ng Panginoon from the beginning of time. That all glory should be His. Hindi niya share ang glory for us. Sa Kanya lang lahat ng kapurihan. So that He will be exalted. He will be glorified. At mangyayari yon when we are subjected to such process in our life. Lalo pa talagang tayo push na behind the wall wherein wala na tayong magagawa. Kailangan natin ng tulong ng Panginoon. At sa pagtawag, sa pagtitiwala, pananalangin, subjecting ourselves in the process, then there is that time that God will allow that to pass. He will deliver us. The only question or doubt doon is kapag hindi natin pinaniwalaan yung promise. And God cannot lie when He promised something to us. Kasama rin doon sa pag-exercise natin is yung faith. Pagtitiwala doon sa kanyang ipinangako. And so, when we summarize the result of all of this, lahat is benefit Ganan siya, kumbaga sa Tagalog, sa atin bilang mga mana ng palataya habang nabubuhay tayo dito sa lupa. So walang benefit o walang ganan siya kung hindi natin siya i-embrace. The blessing will be in the embracing of this truth that it is part of our Christian life whilst we are waiting from the Lord for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi nasa mga verses na binabasa natin. Actually, the trials and affliction, hindi yan incidentals. 
promise din iyon ng Panginoon. Pangako niya sa atin upang mapatunayan niya how He will deliver us from such great trials and afflictions. In verse 34, sabi doon, they even lost their possessions. Okay? But, ang sabi doon sa dulong talata, sa dulo ng talata, that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. So you see the consistency of the Word of God in encouraging us. Palagi, ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos, ngunit, huwag kayong mag-alala, mayroon doon sa kalangitan na naghihintay sa iyo, better and an enduring substance who will, which will not perish, which is not temporal, but permanent and eternal. And in verse 35 and 36, the Bible says, Cast not away therefore your confidence. Huwag niyong pabayaan na mawala yung iyong konfiyansa, yung confidence in this life. So, ibig sabihin, kapag naunawaan natin, natin ang process na ito ng Panginoon at in-embrace natin, tataas yung ating confidence Even if we are in the midst of trials and afflictions in life. So cast not away therefore your confidence. Papaano ang proseso para hindi mawala yung confidence? Look, which had great recompense of reward. Again, not in this world. So ang tinuturo din sa atin dito, katulad ni John, ni Paul, yung mga reward na yan is in eternity. Why? Kasi ang tinuturuan dito ng writer ng Hebrews ay may present na trials and afflictions in life. Dito sa mundo na ito, sa buhay na ito. So para saan yung pinapatungkulan niyang better and enduring substance? Ano yung sinasabi niyang which had great recompense of reward? Not in this life. It's in eternity. Doon sa pagre-reign natin nakasama ang Panginoon. Me myself am so blessed with our series right now. Sabi ko nga, yung consistency ng mga turo ng Panginoon through the apostles. From Paul, from Peter, from John. And so, kung kaya sila'y namuhay ng may katapatan, even in the midst of trials and affliction, is because of this understanding. Ang kanilang hope is not in this life, but in eternity. Both the writer of Hebrews and the rest of the apostles at yung mga nauna pang mana ng palataya before us. And so, kung yun ay nagawa nila in their lifetime, pwede rin sa atin. Why? Because we have seen the evidence from the Word of God. Nakita natin the same verses na kanilang binasa all throughout their lives ng mga naonang mana ng palataya sa atin. It's the same message of God. At kung hindi pa babalik ang Panginoon, it's the same message din na ating ngayong ipinapasa sa mga generations to come. So that they will continue with one purpose, di ba? Ipasa yung hope, ipasa yung pag-asa na yun doon sa lost world from their salvation and later on yung true source of genuine hope knowing na yung mundong ginagalawa natin magmula noong panahon ng panahon hanggang sa kapanahon natin at sa mga susunod na panahon wala yung genuine yung tunay na pag-asa na yan sa mundo it's only through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the message of God through his word na available sa atin and upon the generations to come written to the Hebrew people thousand years ago but Isn't it that the same is the message of God to us nowadays? The message, hindi nagbago ang mensahe ng Panginoon. At salamat sa Diyos, nauunawaan natin ang mensahe na yan ng Panginoon sa present day natin. Nagbabago man yung mundong ating ginagalawan, may mga technology man, but nothing can replace the true and genuine hope sa isang tunay na kristyano. Kahit na magkaroon pa ng mga alternative doctrine ang mundo, ng mga alternative na source ng kagalakan, ng kasayahan, entertainment, technology, lahat ng nakikita ng ating mata, nothing can change the true source of genuine hope. And that is the Word of God. That is the Word of God. The writer's encouragement then then is the, still the encouragement today and the generations to come. Praise be to God for 1 Corinthians 10.13. I'm so blessed by that promise of God nang, nang binanggit sa atin that there hath no temptation. Meaning, 
Yung promise of God will sustain us. Hindi yung effort natin, hindi yung lakas natin, influence natin, wealth natin in this world, but the promise of God will sustain us all throughout the trials. Right now, you're listening to this message. Isn't it na marami ng mga trials na lumpas sa buhay mo? Kung ikaw ay mga nanampalataya ngayon, balikan mo siya. Just close your eyes for a, for a second. Maybe five or ten seconds. Balikan mo. Ang dami ng mga trials, difficulties na lumampas sa'yo. Di ba? Kapatid? Di ba lumampas siya lahat? Because God sustain us. So there's no point in doubting that. There's no benefit in doubting that. Instead, meron tayo dapat na joyful heart in embracing that truth. Being excited daily habang nararanasan natin yan, knowing that that is the process of God in refining His people. Praise be to God that verse 37 is there sa binasa natin Hebrews chapter 10. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. So the first question that we will answer in today's sermon is, Who is the one who will come? Alam kong alam nyo na ang kasagutan dyan, but again, sabi ko nga, we will not introduce an alternative source of hope in this world. Not the things na nakikita natin, not the entertainment, not the wealth, not the alternative things na ipinoproduce ng mundo, kundi yung nag-iisa talagang source of hope who will come later on in a little while. And that is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He that shall come will come. Bear in mind, ito na lamang ating hinihintay doon sa mga things to come, yung prophecy to be fulfilled. The rest, napakarami ng natupad. Nabasa natin in the Old Testament, yung pagbaba ng Panginoon, unang beses niyang pagbaba through the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. The death, the burial, the resurrection, prophesied, nangyari, naganap ng lahat. Yung bansang Israel, very evident, na kung saan noong 1948 siya ay naging isa ng nation, it was fulfilled as has been prophesied. So meron na lamang tayong hinihintay right now ang iyong pagbabalik ng Panginoon. At sabi ng salita ng Diyos, He will come. He will come. Sa nag-iisa na lamang na prophecy na ating hinihintay, there's no point for us to doubt. Because of the evidences, because of the revelation of God through His Word, na naganap na ang maraming mga prophecies in the Bible. So are you right now, do you have that? Is it established in your heart right now? Without a doubt, with constant and strong anticipation that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. He is the one who has been prophesied in the Old Testament times. He is the one who died and rose again, promised by the Word of God. He is the one who has been prophesied to come back, the one who knows every detail about persecution. Ang sabi dito sa verses na binasa natin, yung mga sinulatan ng writer ng Hebrew, they are undergoing, they are in present trials and temptations. Kung ikaw ngayon, kapatid, is nandoon sa kalagitnaan ng mga trials sa iyong buhay, anticipate, hintayin mo, kilalanin mo, at pagtiwalaan mo yung Diyos din na nangakong babalik at Diyos din na nakaranas ng the same morpa ng mga trials and affliction na mayroon tayo in our present time. The one who knows about affliction, the one who knows about infirmities, the one who knows about temptation, because the one who is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, literally, in His human form, have experienced all of these things. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 37, for, uh, chapter 4 verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now, if we will again look at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, what is the importance of this news? Sa isang mana ng palataya, sa isang katulad natin, common Christian, na nasasadlak o nakaka-experience ng mga difficulties sa ating buhay, just like the Hebrew people at that time nang isinulat ito ng writer. 
Because the, the, the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back, sabi nga natin, is the one and only true source of genuine hope for a Christian. You may say na palagi natin binabanggit ito sa pulpit, kung magbibigay tayo ng hope in this present world o sa ating temporal life, everything will just pass away. Lilipas siya, mawawala siya. So kung ang pag-asa ng isang Kristiyano is doon sa temporal, kasamang yung hope na yung kasamang nawawala, kasamang lilipas. Kaya minsan sa pagising natin sa umaga, kasamang nawawala yung hope na yon. The true source of our hope sa pagising sa umaga, in continuing, even in the midst of the difficulties of life, ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, dito natin ilagay doon sa paghihintay ng pagbabalik ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Why? Because that is the way and the method of God so that His promise that no, no amount of trials or affliction can overcome us. Kung kaya minsan tayo ay nagiging talunan ng mga difficulties of life. Because na ipe-place natin yung hope in the wrong object. Iba ang mali ang source na pinagkukuha na natin ng pag-asa. And what a blessing to understand that the New Testament writers of the Bible, iisang kanilang object ng genuine hope na ito. It is the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in fact, evidences from the Bible ay pinakita sa atin. One out of 30 Bible verses teaches it. Ganun in-emphasize ng Panginoon at ni-reveal sa atin upang ating makita yung kahalagahan na dito natin i-place yung ating pag-asa. It is prophesied in the Old Testament. Then, Apostle John wrote it. Paul wrote it in Corinthians, in, Thessalon in, in Thessalonica. And Apostle John in, in John, in 1 John, 2 John, and also in Revelations. It was mentioned eight times more than the first coming. Mahalaga ang unang pagbaba dito ng Panginoong Jesus talking about His virgin birth at yung kanyang pag-fulfill ng kalooban ng Ama. But it's also mentioned eight times yung second coming ng Panginoong Jesus. It is very important. In 216 chapters of the Bible, there are 318 references to it. There's even a whole chapter given to it and a whole book given to it. The book of Revelation talks about that final event, yung pagbabalik ng ating Panginoong Jesus. So knowing that Jesus will once one day comes back, knowing that Jesus coming back was so emphasized in the Word of God, in the Bible, then ang hamon sa atin ngayon bilang mga mana ng palataya is to put extra effort in understanding, knowing, anticipating that great event. Knowing na iyon yung pala ang talagang true source ng ating pag-asa. That could motivate us, push us to live this life even in the midst of that great trials and afflictions. John chapter 14, lagi nating inuulit-ulit yan, that the, from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, inaalam niya sa discourage na kanyang mga apostoles, imagine niyo yung sitwasyon at that time dun sa kanilang upper room, Sinabi ng Panginoon na iiwanan niya na ang kanyang mga apostoles. Ang tagal niya ang kasama during his ministry and then nagsabi ang Panginoon na iiwanan niya. At nangako siya that he will come back. Kukuhanin ng kanyang mga niligtas and be with him in all eternity. Sinabi ng anghel that they are looking at the Lord Jesus Christ sa kanyang pagkakayat sa langit, in Acts chapter 1 verse 11, the same Jesus Christ na umakayat ay the same Jesus Christ na bababa. And so, ganun din ang pagkakasabi sa atin ng mga apostoles, John, Paul, and Peter, specifically. So we Christians believe this promise even though yung mundong nakapaligid sa atin is rejecting it. Knowing na iyon nga ang ating true and only source of genuine hope in this life. 
nothing can replace that. Pwede tayong mag-testing. Pwede tayong mag-experiment. God will allow that. Ginagawa natin yon kahit na alam na natin, mag-place pa rin tayo sometimes ng hope sa ibang bagay, sa mga alternative, pero babalik at babalik tayo dito. If you are a true Bible-believing Christian, our hope and our prayer should be that mawala na yung doubt sa ating mga puso. Noong tayo bagong mana ng palataya, well, yes, hindi pa natin to nakikita, hindi pa natin naririnig sa preaching, hindi pa natin naiintindihan. But now that we are maturing in the faith, cultivate that in your heart. Believe. Sometimes just lay back sa iyong upuan, memorize. Kung hindi mo kaya memorize, basahin mo palagi. And John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, if you are troubled, if you are so concerned with this life, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I will go and prepare a place for you. And if I will go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, what's the scenario? If we are overwhelmed with the trials of this life, what will happen? Dalawa lang naman palagi mangyayari, di ba? Lalampas siya. Kung ikaw ay may pagtitiwala sa Panginoon, you will just trust God. Faithfully serving Him, mararanasan mo that you will have peace and those trials will come to pass. At the end of the day, it will come to pass because God promised it will come to pass at ikaw ay bibigyan niya ngayon ng pagkakataon na malampasan niyan because He will provide a way to escape. Pero lagyan mo siya ng worry, lagyan mo siya ng maraming doubt babagsak din minsan ang iyong pananampalataya. Manghihina ang iyong resolve, ang iyong spirito, ang iyong katawan, ang iyong isip. Mau-overwhelm ka with those trials and afflictions. And that's what the adversary, the devil, wants. So that hindi mapulpil yung kalooban ng Panginoon sa atin whilst we are here on earth. That is serving Him, and that is witnessing to people, and that is translating that hope to others. So try yung isang yung unang binanggit ko kanina, put your trust do sa promise ng Panginoon, just let it pass, because at the end of the day, it will come to pass as what God promised. Maaring kamatayan natin yon, or bumalik ang Panginoon, but one thing is common, it will come to an end. It will come to pass. Ang sabi ni John, The world shall pass away, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Kasama siyang mawawala. Lahat ng mga iniisip natin yan and worries of this world, it will all come to pass. So put your hope, so put your genuine hope dito sa katotohanan ng ating narinig that one day, the Lord Jesus Christ will come. And whilst we are waiting, He also promised us that He will be the one who will let it pass. He will give us that way so that we can escape those great trials and afflictions of this life. So that we can have that joy and peace whilst we are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Impress that in your heart. Basahin mo ng basahin ng salita ng Diyos, kapatid. Every time you are so overwhelmed, yun po kasi ang gusto ng mundo. So that mawala ang ating isip dito sa true source of hope na ito. Who is the one who will come? The Lord Jesus Christ. But why? Why is it? The question is, why is it that hindi pa siya bumabalik? Why has He not yet come? Sabi doon muli sa verse 37, For yet a little while, And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Look, kaya minsan po tayo din ay bumabagsak is because tayo ang nagbibigay ng criteria nung matagal at saka yung maiksi. The Bible says, He will come and He will not tarry. Ang pagtiwalaan natin is yung right time ng Panginoon. He is sovereign in all things. Kanyang perfect time, kanyang perfect Place, kanyang perfect event. Ang kanyang demand sa atin is to exercise that waiting 
exercising faith habang hinihintay ang kanyang pagbabalik. Now, this, this, this uh, verse itself ay nagpo-produce ng maraming doubt sa kanyang mga anak, sa kanyang mga mana ng palataya. And during the apostles, apostle, uh, apostles' time, Peter says that noong pangkapanahon na marami na ang scoffers, yung sila ay parang tinutukso, kinukutya, sinasabi o nasaan na ang pagbabalik ng Panginoong Jesus. Even believers are in that position, scoffing. Sabi sa 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, Knowing this first that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. It is the product of the flesh. Yung pagdududa, yung pagtatanong, scoffing about the Lord's coming. It is the same scoffing people during the time of Noah. Doon sa kanyang 120 years ng pagbibuild ng kanyang ark, which is actually the way ni Noah of preaching. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Preacher of righteousness. So in that 120 years, si Noah, hindi tumitigil of warning, of telling people. At kasama doon sa doubt na maari nating dumating sa ating puso is because of the majority surrounding us who do not believe. Sa kapanahonan natin ngayon, yung scoffers is not only to ridicule the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but yung mga scoffers ngayon is truly telling us that there's no truth, that there is God. Hindi na lang sila nag scoff about the Lord's coming, kundi sinasabi na ng mundong nakapaligid sa atin ng walang katotohanan na may Diyos. Lalo pa ngayon that we can see a lot in YouTube, sa mga Facebook videos of those people na talagang tahasan direct from their mouth, the rejection of the existence of God. But out of the many millions nung pa-time ni Noah, walo ang sinabi sa salita ng Diyos na spare from this wrath. At ganun din ang mangyayari in the future. At kung ayun ang ginagawa ng, ng, ng devil, ng adversary, at that time ni Noah, ganun pa rin ang ginagawa ng devil ang adversary natin sa kapanahonan natin. Na ang mga mana ng palatay ang magkaroon ng doubt sa kanilang puso sa pagbabalik ng Panginoong Jesus. And we will be just overwhelmed by all the issues of life. And when that happen then ang mga mana ng palataya, mawawala ang goal, ang focus of spreading the word, of winning souls for Christ, of telling others about this hope. They are just mocking the idea of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. The world is already rejecting the thought of God existing in the first place. So the more, the more that we Christians nowadays ay may tamang object nang pinaglalagyan natin ng hope ng pag-asa sa buhay na ito upang ang mensahe ng Panginoon from the beginning of time ay hindi mawala sa ating mga bibig the same message from Noah is the same message today that we will be sharing and preaching but when we look at the bible itself there are reasons why Jesus Christ is not coming back first and foremost we have to look at the sovereignty of God because God Appoint, God's appointed hour and time has not yet arrived. Hindi pa po dumarating. Pabayaan natin ang perfect time ng Panginoon. Ang kanyang sovereignty in appointing that perfect time sa kanyang pagbabalik. In Matthew 24 verse 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. We have to exercise this faith to our Creator, to our sovereign God. Hindi lagyan ng lagyan ng pagdudud at kwestiyon ng ating mga puso, kundi i-exercise natin ang ating pananampalatay at pagtitiwala sa ating Diyos. In the first place, He is our God. He is our sovereign God. He is our Creator. Even though the world surrounding us is mocking it. Kahit nga yung unang pagbaba ng Panginoon, sa kanyang virgin birth, it is in the appointed time of God. 
in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 to 5, but when the fullness of time, yun yung expression noong tamang oras at panahon na ang Diyos lamang ang magtatalaga, siya ang mag-a-appoint. The fullness of time, nung dumating na doon sa tamang panahon, was come God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that we are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So itong katuroan na ito, ito rin ang nagbibigay sa atin ngayon ng confidence in this life. May mga bagay tayong inaasam sa ating buhay din, but in the appointed time of God, in the fullness of His time, doon din kayo nagkakaroon ng pagtitiwala, ng confidence, waiting for God's answer in our common prayers, in God's appointed time. The Lord is not coming back because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has still a lot of work to do. In Acts chapter 15, verses 14 to 16, Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for His name. Ito naman talaga ang business ng Panginoon ever since, to save. A lost soul. And to disagree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Also, yung God's patience to you and I, okay? Kaya nga po, isa sa mga paborito ko rin verses is yung, yung sinabi ni Paul. He who hath begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We may look sometimes sa mga buhay natin na maraming failures, mistakes before. God is not finished with you, kapatid. He's not finished with me. Looking forward pa tayo sa mga tatrabahuhin sa atin ng Panginoon, babaguhin sa ating buhay, tatanggalin yung mga bagay na hindi mahalaga sa ating buhay, refining our life, purifying it. So be excited in the process. It's not about your age. God is not yet finished with us. He is not, it's not completed yung kanyang purpose sa buhay ng bawat isa. So be excited. Look with 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 genuine hope and anticipation be excited daily marami pang gagawin sa atin ng panginoon his long suffering or patience has not yet been exhausted lalo pa sa area ng kaligtasan sabi nga natin itong panahon natin i-maximize natin ngayon yung grace na iyan at mercy ng panginoon this is the time to win 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 more souls for the lord jesus christ Darating ang time that God will just execute His wrath and His judgment that yung grace na at yung kanyang mercy ay wala na na naranasan natin sa kapanahonan natin. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 11, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. But the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering or patient to us who are not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, see, the day of the Lord will come, darating at darating ang time na yon, ng pagbabalik ng Panginoon, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth shall also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be? in all holy conversations and godliness. Kung kaya hindi rin natin alam yung perfect time na iyan, exactong time na iyan, so that we will live this life in constant faith and anticipation sa pagbabalik ng Panginoon in all our conversation and all manners of godly living. Lagi nating binabanggit dito kung ano talaga yung kahulugan ng love of God. Akala natin because before ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa atin is yung pagdadala niya sa atin sa kalangitan. But no, the true meaning of the love of God is doon sa pag-spare niya sa atin, doon sa very wrath and judgment na kanyang i-execute. You see, the world is failing right now and the doctrine of the world is so corrupt in that. Ano po ba ang doctrine ng mundo? Kung sila naniniwala sa Diyos, ang isa lamang attribute ang kanilang pinaniniwalaan sa Diyos at iyon ay ang Diyos ng pag-ibig pag-ibig in a way that He will tolerate sin 
na wala ang attribute ng Diyos na kung siya ay holy at saka siya ay just, that one day He will execute wrath. Then the, the truth about hell is no longer existence sa turo ng mundo sa kapanahonan natin. But God, in His Word, ipinakilala niya ang sarili niya sa atin as a holy and just God. Therefore, part of that holiness is Him executing, punishing. He is always angry against sin. And part ng kanyang justice at kanyang holiness is the execution of that wrath. Hindi mawawala yun because it will compromise His holiness. Therefore, saan pumasok ngayon ang pag-ibig ng Diyos? Knowing that He will execute that judgment, pumasok ang pag-ibig ng Diyos in John 3.16. But God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish. Reality at absolute ang truth na mayroong word na perish, may kapahamakan, may hell, may punishment ang Panginoon. So, ang pag-ibig ng Diyos is in what form? In Him is sparing us from hell. And that is by sending the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the true meaning of God's love. And He is long-suffering right now, waiting for a penitent sinner to repent and turn to Him. Believe doon sa kanyang kaparaanan ng kaligtasan na siya mismo ang nag-provide din. And that is the true meaning of God's love. So kung bakit hindi pa bumabalik ang Panginoon? Because of His love. He's still waiting, He's long-suffering, patient for a penitent sinner to come but just like the 120 years of Noah, the Bible keeps on repeating, making us aware, He will come back. He will come back and will finally, once and for all, execute that judgment. Sa iyo kaibigan, ngayon muli ay yun ang aming mensahe. Bago maging huli ang lahat, sana isa ka doon sa may spare doon sa rat na i-execute ng ating Panginoon. Mahal ka ng Diyos kung kaya napapanood mo ang mensahe, kung kaya may nag-share sa iyo. The world keeps on bombarding us that these Christians are so judgmental, telling us of our sins. Well, that's genuine love if somebody share this message to you because it will happen one day. God will come back. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself will execute the judgment. Be saved today. If the whole of mankind will know the exact date, time of the Lord's coming, do you think faith will be exercised? The answer is a big no. And the Bible revealed to us that it's only by faith that we can please God. Sa pag-exercise natin ng paghihintay ng may pananampalataya, Sa pagbabalik ng Panginoon, He is pleased. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those of them that diligently seek Him. So naintindihan mo ngayon, kaibigan, kung sino yung babalik. Naintindihan mo ngayon din, kapatid sa pananampalataya, kung bakit hindi pa bumabalik ang ating Panginoon. What is our response to these truths? Finally, in our third point, when will He come? Again, in verse 37, for yet a little while. For yet a little while. Alam niyo po, marami na sa ating generation, marami na akong nababasa sa internet, mga date setters na tinatawag, yung nagseset ng date. Sabi noon, pag dumating daw yung year 2000, millennium, Ang kanilang sinasabi, babalik ang Panginoon. Lahat ito ay na-prove wrong. Kasi walang binanggit ang Panginoon sa atin sa kanyang salita. For us to anticipate by faith and constant Christ-like living and to be active in the work of His Church in winning souls and discipling people. Kasi kung alam natin lahat ang date ng darating ang Panginoon, sasabihin natin, doon na lamang ako maglilingkod. Doon na lamang ako tatanggap sa Panginoong Jesus. Kaya ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, He will come like a thief in the night. Iaanons ba ng isang magnanakong kung alam siya papasok sa isang bahay? 
Hindi po. Doon sa time, least expected. Ganun din ang pagbabalik sa atin ng Panginoon. Date setters or those who will always proclaim and shout that on this date, particular day, the Lord will come back. Time and time again, they were proven wrong. It's not for us. It's not for us to look at this perfect date or time. Hindi po yun ang mahalaga. Basta ang mahalaga sa ating puso, babalik ang Panginoon as He promised. Yun yung call sa ating mga mana ng palataya. So isang indication ng false prophecy are those fixing dates and time. Throughout history, there are those who attempt to convince people. And by the way, they are so attractive. Marami siyang nadideceive. May this be a warning to all of us right now. Huwag tayong sumunod doon sa mga false prophets. Nagtatalaga ng mga eksaktong date, time, kaparaanan ng, ng makikita at babalik daw ang Panginoong Jesus. No. Meron akong nailagay dito mga personality. They are, they are accessible sa internet. There's this Jane Dixon. The alleged psychic claimed that Armageddon would take place in 2020. Lumampas na po yung 2020. We are now in 2021. And Jesus would return to defeat the unholy trinity of Antichrist, Satan, and the false prophet between 2020 and 2037. Noong sinabi niya 2020, dinagdagan niya hanggang 2037. So matagal. Chad Daybell and Lori Daybell, magasawa the couple charged in connection with the disappearance and death of her children, Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, believed that the second coming would be on July 22, 2020. Again, lumampas na ang date na yon. There's this uh, individual named F. Kenton, quote-unquote, yung kanyang, uh, tawag sa kanya is Doc. Ang kanyang apelido is Beshore. Kenton Beshor, Beshor bases his prediction on the prior suggestion that Jesus could return in 1988 and then within one biblical generation, 40 years of the founding of Israel in 1948. Sabi niya from 1948 plus 40, it will be 1988. But again, they were all proven wrong, false. Beshor, Beshor argues that the prediction was correct, but that the definition of a biblical generation was incorrect and was actually 70 to 80 years. So placing the second coming down between 2018 and 2028. And the rapture by 2029, 21 at the latest. So hindi pa tapos yung 2021, we don't know. But marami po yan. Kayong kung i-access nyo ang information sa internet, right? Ang marami na po nagsasabi kung anong exact nung date, but they are all, they were all proven wrong. But what God revealed to us through the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ is His coming sooner than we think. At yung message na yon na least expected is for us to be motivated sa present na buhay natin right now. Na yung araw-araw nating paggising, araw-araw nating paglilingkod sa Panginoon, yung constant anticipation na any moment in a twinkling of an eye, yung message ng ating song kanina, in a twinkling of an eye, the Lord Jesus Christ will come. So that we can guard our life and we could, we could have that continuous focus sa ating pong Panginoon. In Matthew 24 verse 44, therefore be ye also ready. Yun yung encouragement sa atin, just to be ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Yung pong pangutya ng buong mundo will not matter when this event comes. Kahit pasabihin natin yung antagal-tagal na ng panahon because we are the ones making the criteria na matagal. No. It cannot be compared to eternity. Kahit nasabihin natin na 2021 na ngayon o dumating pa ang 2050, it still, it is a fixed time and date. It cannot be compared to eternity. So still, may ikse ang mga fixed time na yan in comparison to eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang kanya lamang exhortation for us is just to be ready. Kung hindi ka pamana ng palataya, be ready. Put your trust and faith to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. At kung ikaw naman ay mana ng palataya, serve God. 
serve God. Be ready. Yun ang yung readiness natin. Yun ang preparation natin. Patuloy ka lang maglingkod sa Panginoon. Through His church. Sa pamamagitan ng kanyang simbahan. Because it is the church where the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. It is the church na pinagbayaran niya ng kanyang banal na dugo. It is the church na binigyan niya ng kanyang great commission. Christ will surely come in a little while. In a little while. In the, the Paul says in the book of Corinthians, in a twinkling of an eye. The writer of Hebrews says, in a little while, He will surely come. Sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, in the time and hour least expected. Dalawa lamang ang tao sa mundo, believers and unbelievers. If you are still an unbeliever of the Lord Jesus Christ, yung hope mo is nandito pa rin sa mundo, hindi ka nakatitiyak na yung kalagkaligtasan. Ang sabi dito sa salita ng Diyos, Matthew 24, 44, be ready. Paano ka pwedeng maging ready, kaibigan? By turning to Jesus Christ and secure your salvation. Be saved today. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your wrong beliefs. Turn to Him. Paniwalaan pa ng palatayan na siya ang nag-iisang tagapagligtas ng iyong buhay. And the Bible says, you can be saved today. At sa Christian, iisa lamang ang panawagan magmula nung araw hanggang sa kapanahonan natin. Even in the midst of many scoffers, just serve God. Continue, be faithful unto Him. Ang trials and afflictions of life, hindi yan mawawala habang tayo nasa imperfect world na ito. Kasi promise din yun ng Panginoon. That's His way. That's His process. Lahat tayo ay dadana sa proseso na yan ng Panginoon. Kung patuloy mo yung paglalabanan, kapatid, no benefit sa iyong buhay, Kristiyano, sa iyong buhay pananampalataya. Embrace it. And claim the promise of God in 1 Corinthians 10.13. It will come to pass. Siya ang gagawa ng kaparanan din sa iyo. Be faithful in Him. Just serve Him. Until that appointed time, the fullness of time, na ang Panginoon nakakaalam, ay dumating. Kung kaya doon sa time least expected, mahalaga na tayo datna ng Panginoon na tapat na naglilingkod sa Kanya. Kaya hindi natin alam ang time, hindi natin alam ang exact date. So that we will always be ready, guarded, anticipating for His coming. We will end this by this quotation from A. B. Simpson, as he says, "I will quote: There are two ways of looking at the Lord's coming: a looking for it and a looking at it. Okay? It is possible to look at it with keen intellect and profound interest, and yet." Have it mean nothing to us personally. So dalawa daw yung mga mana ng palataya na naghihintay sa Panginoon. Looking for it and looking at it. Yung isa, pinupuno niya ang kanyang isip ng mga, well, the truths from the Bible. We can be so intellectual, we can be so inform, uh, informed of the Lord's coming at naintindihan natin and yet pwede pa rin na parang wala siyang tunay na kahulugan sa ating buhay. At yung isang type ng mananampalataya, it can be that the level of information, as I quote A.B. Simpson, it is also possible to know but little of the theology of the subject and yet have a deep and holy longing for our Lord to appear. May this theme be not only our study, but also our personal hope. For unto them that look for Him, shall He appear a second time without sin unto salvation. So nasaan tayo ngayon, kapatid, sa pananampalataya? We may be so informed, intellectually, when it comes to yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng proseso ng pagbalik ng Panginoon. Well, it's not bad. Sa katotohanan niyan, talagang gusto ng Panginoon na unawain natin siya ng mabuti. Pero sometimes, let's be careful. Baka doon lamang natigil yung ating anticipation. Doon lamang natigil sa intellectual, doon sa mga information na ating narinig pertaining to the Lord's coming and yet wala siyang deep meaning sa ating mga buhay. On the other hand, you can have less 
sa theology about the Lord's coming and yet deeply rooted sa iyong heart na alam mong babalik siya and because of that, you are preparing. You are always ready. Like a thief in the night, alam mo, in the time least expected, darating ang Panginoon. And that is the call of God. That is the message of God. Through the apostle's mouth, through the Lord Jesus Christ, in a little while, in a twinkling of an eye, babalik ang ating Panginoon. As Christians, yung bang katotohanan na yon ay may deep meaning sa ating mga buhay. Alam na natin kung paano mag-prepare bilang mga Kristiyano. Kung ikaw ay ligtas na, a new Christian right now, somebody shared to you the gospel, you have received Jesus Christ, how can you prepare? Be baptized. Be baptized and be a member of a local church. Kung ikaw ay member na ng isang local church, paano ka magpe-prepare? Serve Him faithfully in the church. Use your skills, your talents, your resources. Be faithful in sharing the gospel. Kung hindi ka pa na di-disciple, subject yourself in the discipleship lesson ng iyong simbahan. And then later on, ikaw din ay magiging discipler na ng mga bagong mana ng palataya. Bakit ba natin lahat gagawin ito? Because ito yung kalooban ng Diyos. Ito ang gusto ng Panginoon. Ito ang kadahilanan ng kanyang kamatayan sa cross in the first place. For the salvation of a lost soul. Hindi bumaba ang Panginoon para solusyonan ang economic problem ng mga country o yung mga pananalapin nating problema. No. Ang kanyang sinolusyonan is yung problema ng ating espiritu, ng ating spiritual corruption. Yun ang sinolusyonan ng Panginoon sa kanyang pagbaba. And so, yun din ang mensahe supposed to be ng simbahan. How can we be prepared? Be part of a local church. Serve Him in the church. Be faithful in your tithes and offering. Be faithful in witnessing to people. Be faithful in the prayer time of your church. Be prepared in being faithful in reading His Word and populating your mind with the Word of God. And once again to our friends, how can you be prepared sa pagbabalik ng Panginoong Jesus? There is the truth to come. Hindi naging silent ang Panginoon in revealing that truth to us. When you look at the book of Revelations, mas marami pong paliwanag ang Panginoon patungkol sa wrath, sa hell, sa judgment niya. Will you be ready today? Will you have that critical decision na ikaw lamang ang makagagawa, hindi yan pwedeng gawin ng sino man sa iyo, kaibigan? Alam mo na ngayon ang katatayuan mo, you have wronged God. You have sinned God. You cannot make a doctrine that will compromise the holiness and the justice of God. He will be always holy and just. But He loves you. Siya ang gumawa ng paraan so that you can be spared from the very wrath that He will one day execute. And that is by sending Jesus Christ. Now you know the reason why Jesus came. It's for your sin. It's for my sin and the sin of the whole world. May you be one today. Ikaw sana isa doon sa mga kikilala sa Panginoong Jesus bilang iyong Panginoon na tagapagligtas. And after that, be ready as a Christian Be baptized, be a faithful member of your church, serve Him in the church until that time comes, the appointed time, the fullness of God's time. We will be blessed today kung tayong kapanahonan natin is bumaba ang Panginoon. But if it will not so, again, maunang kamatayan sa atin in this temporal body, we will be resurrected at that very Grandeur day, the grandest day na hinihintay-hintay ng mga mana ng palataya. And whilst we are in trials and in afflictions, read 1 Corinthians 10.13, God will always make a way for us to escape. That's His promise. Do not doubt that. Believe that by faith. 
And in every day, kung tayo gigising sa ating mga pagkakatulog sa umaga, bago pa man tayo magbigay ng mga sari-saring pag-iisip, alalahanin na agad natin na yung pagising natin sa umaga, ang kadahilanan is to anticipate the Lord's coming. And so, that will motivate us to do more, to serve Him more, whilst waiting for His second coming. Shall we all pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, O God, for the message of your word. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa kabutihan mo. Binigyan mo kami ng opportunity right now, O God, na ma-flip over the pages of the Bible, the consistent message. Magmula pa noon, Panginoon, ito na po ang mensahe mo sa mga mana ng palataya. Thank you, O God, for revealing it to us. From the two Fridays that we had, and even today. Thank you for the writer of the book of Corinthians, Apostle Paul. Thank you for Apostle John. Thank you for Apostle Peter. And thank you for the writer of the book of Hebrews. Thank you for your word. Panginoon, nawa po ay patuloy itong ma-establish sa aming puso. At huwag ng maagaw, Panginoon, na aming kaaway. Help us, O God, na ito may masement sa aming mga puso from this day onwards. Patuloy na ipaalam at paunawa mo ito sa mga mana ng palataya, O Diyos. No amount of trials, difficulties, affirmit, uh, uh, infirmities, O God could separate us from your love. Even, Panginoon, Ikaw ang nangako that you will make a way for us to escape so that we may be able to bear. Nawa po, Panginoon, ay paniwalaan at panampalatayan na namin ang mga pangako mo na ito so that we can serve you faithfully. Sana po, Panginoon, sa pagising namin sa umaga, magkaroon kami palagi ng anticipation of your coming. Upang sa gayon, sa araw-araw naming pamumuhay, Lord, we will be, our lips will be guarded, our eyes will be guarded, our actions will be led by the Spirit. Kami makakalayo sa kasalanan, Panginoon. May impress sa aming puso ang kahalagahan ng pagwi-witness to a lost soul, knowing that you will come in a twinkling at panay. In a little while, you will come, O God. Sa amin po mga kaibigan muli, ang aking pong dalangin, Panginoon, bigyan mo sila, Panginoon, ng conviction from the Holy Spirit. Convict their hearts today. Kahabagan mo po sila, Panginoon. Magligtas ka po ng kaluluwa sa oras po na ito. Thank you, O God, for the message of your word. Thank you, O God, for that wisdom and the understanding that we have today. Salamat sa biyaya, Panginoon. Binigyan mo kami ng kaunawaan sa mga katotohanan po na ito. Yes, the world will continuously bombard us with false hope. Hope in this temporal life and in this temporal world. Tanggalin mo po yung Panginoon sa aming mga pag-iisip. At palitan mo po ng tamang pag-asa that true and genuine source of hope. And that is your second coming. Help us, O God, to anticipate that great day faithfully at sa aming araw-araw na pamumuhay, Panginoon, mahalin ka namin sa pamamagitan ng pagmamahal po namin sa aming simbahan. The church whom you have said na binigyan mo ng Great Commission in Winning Souls, binigyan mo, Panginoon, ng commission upang akay ng mga kaluluwa papunta po sa iyo, ang simbahan ng iyong pinagbayaran ng iyong banal na dugo, and you will always be glorified in the church. Help us to be faithful also, O God, to our church and to other, to other churches, Panginoon, na kami po'y nagiging kapartner both in prayers and in financial blessings na amin din pong maipapahatid sa kanila. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa pangungusap mo sa iyong mga anak, challenging them through your word. We praise you, we thank you, we love you because you have first loved us. In this we ask and pray. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Marami pong salamat muli sa inyong pakikinig. Sana po ay napagpala po muli kayo ng pakikinig ng salita ng Diyos. Sa mga susunod pong Fridays, patuloy po tayo sa ating prophecy series. Mayroon po tayong titignan naman sa mga uh, writing naman through Apostle Peter. Amen. So abangan nyo po yan. And also, abangan nyo po yung ating mga recorded sermon every Saturday. Kung meron po kayong mga uh, gustong uh, ipahatid po sa amin, you can uh, click our uh, Facebook page. You can click our uh, website, dunsbaptist.org. Doon po sa contact us. Kung may mga prayer items po kayo, ipahatid nyo po sa amin. And we will gladly pray for you. Amen. So sana po inapagpala po kayo. Ingatan po kayo ng Panginoon sa buong sanlinggo. See you again next week.